Integrate yourself, everybody. I'm your host, Allison Polo, and you can find me at pureenergypdx.com. Today, I am here with an incredible guest. Her name is Kelsey Abbott. She is an intuitive human design reader, a certified professional professional coach and investigator of joy and the host of the Find Your Awesome podcast. She helps spiritual adventurers remember who they are and why they're here so they can experience more ease, flow, and joy and magic and miracles. She believes that the universe wants us to be sparkly AF and that joy is our natural state. I could not agree more. When Kelsey isn't playing in her business, she's bringing curiosity, play, and joy to triathlon, a sport she races as an elite amateur after a decade in Maine and 16 months of traveling around the U.S. in a small camper. Kelsey now lives in Sarasota, Florida with her husband and dog. In case you haven't guessed, Kelsey is a manifesting generator living her design and following the joy. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with what a manifesting generator is, we'll be talking more about that today. We're going to talk about human design, what it is, and about all the different energy types. And Kelsey's going to share today um, so much about that because I, I, I bring this up to many people and they're like, what is human design? And I can't really explain it because I, I've only dipped my toe in it and I think it's fascinating, but I don't know quite enough about it to really explain what it is. So that's why I had Kelsey come on the show today so she can, um, she can open everybody up to what human design is and the possibilities there. So welcome Kelsey to the show. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much, Allison. <laughs> I'm excited to see what happens today. Me too. I'm so excited. I, I would love for you to start by sharing uh, whatever you'd like to share about yourself, Kelsey, and how you got into this work. Because it's not like there's a university for human design, like it's not really well known, right? So how did you stumble upon this? Yeah, it's not well known at all. And I kind of feel like it has a branding problem with the title. Like the title human design just is not exciting. Yeah. But, it, yeah. I, I, I thought that too, when I first heard about it, I was like, huh. <laughs> yeah. like the title is like a, a potato. That's like a russet potato. Yeah. That's what I picture when someone says human design. Anyway, I got into human design. I became a certified professional coach back in 2013 and started my podcast, the find your awesome podcast in 2017. And somewhere along the line, I had a guest on my podcast ask me if I knew what human design was. And I said, no. And I was so skeptical because again, like that title, I was like, what, what are you talking about? Right. And then she sent me the link to go look up my chart. And I looked up my chart and I learned that I was a manifesting generator. And then I see, if you haven't seen a human design chart before, it's like, <laughs> uh, it's a bunch of shapes. It's like the profile of a human head wearing a tent. And yes. then there are a bunch of colors and shapes inside a bunch of numbers and then two columns on either side. Like there's, what are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> now I know exactly what to do with that. And I help people do something with that. But at the time I'm like, okay, well, the only thing I can take from this is manifesting generator. So I kept Googling and was not getting satisfactory <laughs> answers until finally I came across the phrase warrior Buddha. And I was uh -huh. like, oh, oh that like hit me in the gut. Like that resonated deeply with my soul. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, okay. That was just enough, just a big enough breadcrumb for me to be like, okay, more, more, more. And I just kept following and flowing. And I was like, oh, this is the piece that was missing from my business. This is, I've always been on a mission to help people remember who they are and why they're here. And now human design gives me a blueprint where I can point to something and say, remember, this is how you're supposed to do this. Or remember, that's not for you. Remember, right. you have this superpower. Use it. Yeah, I agree. I, I love that aspect of it. That's what hit me too, is like, wow, like I actually have a blueprint from myself. I wish I had this earlier. This would have been so helpful. But then again, it's an affirmation 
in some respects to what, if you have been on a certain path, like, Hey, I've been on the right path, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really great that way. So that's really cool. And I laughed to be at that part where you said you saw that and you were like, what the heck am I supposed to do with this, th this weird looking chart? I thought the same thing. I was like, okay, this is cool, but <laughs> how am I supposed to integrate this information? You know, what do I do with it? So that was really, that's great that you were so curious to look more into it. And um, I think I, let me, I'm just going to pull something up real quick. Cause that you said that you were what the P what kind of warrior was it again? A warrior Buddha. That's another <sighs> term for manifesting generator. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I love that actually. All right, cool. So I'll tell you what I was real quick, if I can find it. Now, you know, apparently there's different names for it. Um, like at first she said it was the, uh, the old name for it was the hermit optimist or something. And I was like that. Oh, yeah, hermit we were, opportunist. Yeah. Opportunist. That's yeah. That's your profile, but the energy okay. types all have the same names. Oh, I see. Got you. Okay. So, but she was like, well, I like better the easy breezy genius. So I was like, that sounds good. For oh, me too. you worked with somebody <laughs> who yeah. was trained by the same person that trained me. Oh, really? No yeah. way. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, how, what are the chances? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, so you're a two, four, you're really good at a lot of things and you have no idea because you can't see yourself. This is so true. And I'm just starting to see that. <laughs> you pick, I'm married to a two, four. Um, and he picks things up so fast. Yeah. And so sometimes you guys aren't the best teachers because you, you're just like, and, and so you do it. And yeah. The person's like, um, how? I had to learn that. Yes. <laughs> it's like, wait, can you just do that? Yep. <laughs> okay, here, you, just, you guys just show you. pick things up so <laughs> fast. That's so funny. I love that. Well, okay. So let's see enough about me. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to kind of move on with a little bit more about what, so, okay. So what, it, I guess my question is what is the name then for a generator and a projector and a re reflector? Um, Cause you, you had mentioned the name for the manifesting generator. Hmm. Uh, That's interesting. I don't know. Oh, okay, I okay. just work with generator manifester. Oh, I don't okay. usually even tell people the warrior Buddha bit. I, I don't oh, even know if that would resonate with other MGs or if okay, that's yeah. just for me. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. Please just tell me, just talk to me. Like I know nothing about it and I pretty much don't. So that's okay. kind of where we're at with this. Yeah. So let's start with <laughs> what is human design, right? It, I'm going to explain it two ways. First, here's the boring answer. It was channeled in the eighties by this guy, Ra Uruhu, and it's a compilation of the chakra system, astrology, and the Kabbalah tree of life. Mm. All right. You don't know what to do with that information. Don't worry. <laughs> Here's what you need to know. Your little baby soul got called to earth school and it got so excited because this is the big time earth school. And it got all ready for you for your grand entrance by making this blueprint for you and choosing every tool you would need to be who you're supposed to be and do what you're supposed to do in this round of earth school. And then it sprinkled all of that magic in your chart. And then you come into earth school and on day one, you know it all. And on day two, you've forgotten most of it. <laughs> and then some day later, you discover human design and you discover your blueprint and you work with somebody who can explain it to you. And it all comes back. Of course, by then you've been shooted on by mm. plenty of other humans who were really trying to help, who did that shooting from such love. And you've got these beliefs that you need to shake out. We call it conditioning in human design. You got to get rid of all that conditioning so that you can be brave enough to be who your soul decided you're supposed to be. Every single one of us is here to change the world in our own unique way. And that own unique way is by owning and sharing our gifts and then celebrating other people as they're owning and sharing their gifts. The amazing thing is that none of us are the same at all. So we all need each other and we're all puzzle pieces that fit together. Yeah. I love that. And then there's no competitiveness or, no. yeah, or self-worth issues, right? Because we're all unique and we have our own, we kind of are aware of what we're here to do and, you know our gifts and all that stuff. Yeah. For instance, there is a gift of knowing how to say things. I don't have it. 
Knowing how to say things. Yeah. It's like these people, when they, they just can say things like 10 different ways to 10 different people, Mm -hmm. no problem. And you know, they just always say things the right way. Okay. And I absolutely yeah. don't have it. Like when I'm, so I know people who have that and I reach right. out to them when I have to have an awkward conversation Oh, right. and say, okay, how do I say this? How do I read this text? How do I read this email? Yeah. 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 Because we all need each other. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we all need support because we can't do it all. Right. No, Yeah. no, we'd be way too busy. That would not work. Right. We need to need each other. We need to be like, we're interlocking pieces. We need to lock in. And then when we lock in, that's how we rise. In fact, there's a belief that we are a planet filled with like almost 8 billion separate humans, but we're not. We're one human shattered into almost 8 billion pieces. And all of those pieces are meant to fit together so that we can rise together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And I truly believe that too. It is a very hard concept for people to grasp, especially when we're under this illusion of separation, right? And that's, there's a reason for that. We, you know, otherwise we wouldn't really learn if we didn't have this illusion of separation, um, you know, so we can feel things and experience things that way, right? Yeah, we're unique and different, but not separate. Yes. Yes. I like that. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, Oh my goodness. Okay. So I love this next topic we're, we're getting into as it relates to human design, um, how each energy type can clean up their auras so they can tap into greater sources of energy. Mm -hmm. So I love that because I do a regular energy clearing for myself through a meditation that I do. Um, is, so you're, it sounds like you're saying that there's each energy type has a certain, a certain way that they could do it. That's better for each, for each type. Um, yeah, let's true? go okay. through the types okay. and then in that I'll explain how they can. Be okay, squeaky cool. Clean. Yeah. That's a good idea. We should do the types first. So, <laughs> so people know what we're talking about. So I'm going to start with manifesting generator because I've already mentioned that manifesting generators, what I am, we are hybrids of manifestors and generators. Hmm. We are here to play and follow the joy. We are here to do things that other people say is impossible and to do them with such ease and play and joy. We're here to carve a brand new path. We are not here to do things that have been done before. We are absolutely positively not here to be put in labels and boxes. Mm -mm. We're like the multi-passionate people and we bounce. We bounce from thing to thing to thing to thing. Mm. And this is all part of our path. It is all perfect. Mm. Like my career path, I started out as a marine biologist. Um, I don't even know the order. So I studied killer whales. I studied dolphins. I studied coral reef fish. I coached swimming. I coached triathletes. I was a personal trainer, taught group fitness. Uh, I was a science writer. And then I became a professional coach, adding human design adding mindfulness and meditation. And it is all me. It's not like I actually left behind any of those pieces. I'm just like no longer, I say I'm a non-practicing marine biologist. Oh, right. And yet still like, I'm super passionate about the ocean. Yeah. I'm super passionate about the environment. So the world tells us that we're supposed to go A, B, C, D. For MGs, it's more like A, platypus, purple potato, helicopter. (laughs) And that is exactly how we're supposed to do it. Somewhere along the line, some MGs label themselves or other people do as flighty. And no, you're, you are perfect. You are you. And MGs, we trigger people because we're so different because we pivot so quickly because we move so fast. Yes. And we don't like triggering people. So a lot of MGs will hide their sparkle and really try and follow the rules just so they don't upset other people. And when an MG does that, they're not helping anyone. MGs and generators are here to follow what lights them up. And when we follow what lights us up, 
our energy becomes super sparkly. And when our energy becomes super sparkly, it's irresistible. It's magnetic and it elevates the world. That's what we're here for. So how can an MG keep her aura clear and clean? Release everything that is a no and step into and own your power. I like that. And bounce and flow fast and let other people follow you. Don't slow down and wait for them. Just people are going to tell you all the time, slow down. And obviously if you're tired, if you feel like you need to slow down, slow down. But if you really just don't understand what they're talking about and you feel good, keep going. People will follow you. I think my husband's a manifesting generator for some reason. (laughs) For some reason. (laughs) I had to look that up again. I I know I looked it up a while ago and I've I, I think I remember him being a manifesting generator and that sounds like him. So it might be. <laughs> so then there's generators who are similar to manifesting generators. They are also here to follow what lights them up. They don't bounce from thing to thing, to thing, to thing though. And they don't flow as quickly. They will, okay. they're more likely to dig into one thing for a long time. Yes. And really like master it. Generators are born knowing they're here to help people. And when they're little kids, they get celebrated for sacrificing their desires, for sharing their favorite toy, for going and hugging someone when they don't want to, for, you know, leaving the park early and being a good girl and good boy. So they get this message that they're here to sacrifice themselves and shows up in adults with people pleasing with entrepreneurs scheduling calls at times that are not optimal for them. Right. And what generators need to remember is they're not here to sacrifice themselves. By sacrificing yourself, you might make like create convenience for one other being, but you're not lifting them up by not sacrificing yourself and instead following what lights you up, you become sparkly AF. And that's what helps you and allows you to elevate the world. Yeah. That's your superpower. Yeah. That resonates with me. That's me because I've, I've lived that. And that's Mm -hmm. one of the things I worked on. Yeah. I can't believe that. That's so weird though, that, um, well, I don't know if weird's the right word, but it's just incredible that we, you mentioned the kid thing. Yeah. I definitely did that when I was a kid. Oh my gosh. Wow. And now, you know, you're here to be sparkly. You are here to be lit up when you're lit up. Your energy is so juicy and people aren't going to care what you're selling, what you're talking about. They're just going to want to be in your energy. That sounds good. Yeah. (laughs) See, isn't that so easy? It doesn't even matter what you say. I love it. I'll I'll go with that. (laughs) You just get to follow what lights you up and just be you. Yeah. Yeah. It does seem like life is easier when I do that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And part of that is also clearing out everything that is a no. Yeah. If it's not a holy hell yes, let it go. Yeah. That's what so I'm So that learning. means on every level when you're choosing what you want to eat, if it isn't a holy hell yes, don't put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if it's um you know, maybe there's this standing meeting that you have that you're always kind of like grumble grumble, I should go to this. Right. No, you're wasting your energy. You're here to be sparkly. That is messing up your sparkle. Say no, clear it out, clear out everything that is a no. I like that. I like that, that perspective of, of clearing through honoring yourself, you know, honoring the really what you're here to do and, and how you're here to serve. Yeah. And you are here to serve the world by being sparkly. Like that is your job here. I can do that. So you got to take care of your sparkle. Yeah. That's, that's that your job amazing. all day, every day. I can definitely do that, mm-hmm. Kelsey. Yeah, for sure. Well, okay. So, <laughs> so I'm, I don't know a whole bunch about reflectors and projectors. So let's talk about them too. And they're do, very do interesting. Do you want to do manifestors well. first or? Oh yeah, I forgot to... about manifestors. Let's do that. All right. yeah. So manifestors have the biggest aura. The, oh, a manifestor right. would not have a successful career as a burglar. Their energy, like we feel a manifester when they come into not even just the room, but like a manifester is near you. You're like, like everyone just turns. 
Some, really? Something just shifted. Yeah. Everyone notices. Manifestors get these urges from the universe and they are supposed to follow those urges. Manifestors are really here to own their power. They, as little kids, are often told or interpret that they're told, you're too much, you're too big, you're too loud, you're too dramatic, you're, it's just you're too, too, too. And so manifestors tend to shrink. Mm. And what manifestors need to remember is to take up space energetically yeah. and physically, like be big. You guys, manifestors, you are here to own your power. So you inspire the rest of us to own our power. Wow. Do you think Tony Robbins is a manifester? I don't know. <laughs> That's a really good question. He kind of comes to mind for some reason. He comes to mind when I think the of only that thing kind of I energy. know about Tony Robbins is that he has a defined ego center, uh -huh. which means that he has strong, consistent motivation all day, every day. Yeah. And so when people are at a Tony Robbins event, they're feeling that strong, consistent motivation. And then they oh. leave the event and they're like, uh, they're exhausted. <laughs> yeah. And they're not motivated. And they're like, what oh, happened? Right. Cause it was him. That was mm -hmm. okay. Wow. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so manifestors to clear out your aura. Don't ask other people's opinions. Don't ask permission. Own your power. Just yeah. do, do what, if you want to do something, do it. Be a nice human, please. And just, if you want to do it, do it. That's easy. Yeah. Isn't it? That, yeah. that manifestors don't think it is though. Oh, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> so projectors and reflectors, projectors are actually really common. Projectors are here to guide us. Okay. So oh, projectors. projectors are common. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. Well, generators and manifesting generators are the most common and projectors are right up like behind oh, manifesting okay. generators. And so projectors are like a bird on a branch in the forest. All the rest of us are scrambling around on the ground and that projector sees everything. All oh, right. So they and then they're here to guide us. But the thing is, we're not always ready for their wisdom. So imagine there's a squirrel on the forest floor running around burying nuts, trying to find his nuts. And the projector just yells down, yo, squirrel, your nuts are over here. The squirrel looks up and is like, you jerk, mind your own business. But if the squirrel is running around trying to find his nuts and the squirrel looks up and is like, hey, projector, you see everything. Do you know where I left my nuts? Mm. And then the projector's like, yes, they're over here. And then the squirrel is like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. So the most important thing for projectors to remember is to create invitations before they share their wisdom. If they right. don't, they're going to feel bitter. I mean, the squirrel just called the projector a jerk. And then the projector's like, mm, you wouldn't have found it without me. And that bitterness totally dims their light. A projector is here to be a lighthouse. And when a projector sees themselves and is living aligned with their design, we all see that lighthouse lit up and we come to them for guidance. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Ah. And then reflectors. Hmm. So I said I didn't have other names for the energy types, but reflectors, I call them disco balls of awesomeness <laughs> because they are... They're a reflection of everything around them. They're a reflection of their physical environment and of the humans around them. So when a reflector gets sick, we get worried because like, what are they picking up from? Is it from the people around them? Is it from the environment around them? Yeah. There are canaries in the coal mine. And they, if you are having a conversation with a reflector and you come away being like, Oh my God, I love them so much. They are so much wisdom. Guess what? That was them reflecting your wisdom back to you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Reflectors to clear out their auras, they need to be by themselves. Because otherwise they're just like picking up everyone else's energy and they wow. need to remember that every moment is a brand new moment and that they are a different person every moment. Could this come out as, <clears throat> is a very empathic person in some ways or is Oh that, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh yeah. 
And reflectors, or there are so many different reflectors. People say because they have all their energy centers open, a lot of people think project or reflectors are low energy. I know a reflector who's an Olympian. Oh wow. I know one who's in the federal government. I I know one who's an amazing tarot reader. They're they are everywhere and they they're the ones that are here. Like they are the wisdom of the tribe. They belong oh, in the wow. center except when they want to figure something out for themselves and then they belong all by themselves. Yeah. Cause that's the only way they're going to see anything. And it might take some time by themselves. And that's how they clear it. Them- mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how they can hear themselves as well. Probably. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's really cool. Oh, wow. So, and the way people figure this whole thing out is they give you their birth date, their, all their yeah. information, right? And then that you use that to calculate basically what they are there. Yeah, you yeah. need to know your birth date, your birth time, exactly, which is hopefully on your birth certificate. If it's not on your birth certificate, ask your mom. If your mom doesn't know, you may be able to find it in like the vital records department of right. the city where you were born. And then you need to know the place where you were born and that the place is just for time zone issues. Oh, so you're, okay. you're born in this super tiny town and you're like, Oh my God, it, it doesn't come up. No worries. You find some place that's city. in the same, yeah. same area and you're all set. Oh, cool. That's real easy. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. Um, very cool. Um, and you can get all that on my site. You can submit your information and I'll send you your chart. Oh, perfect. All right. That's easy. Um, so, okay. So with that, we just talked about how to clear auras and, and the things that are very easy, like practical things. But as you said, for some of the types, it's not easy because these are the, these are the lessons that they're here to learn and, 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 you know, evolve from. Right. Um, but then there's this other aspect of being out of alignment and knowing what that feels and looks like and, and how you can get back into alignment by, um, I guess, paying attention. Like, so for me, for example, one of, my, one of my things I remembered her talking about was frustration. So when I see, when I feel frustration, then I know something's out of alignment. I need to pay attention to that if it's honoring me or not, right? Yeah. For generators and manifesting generators, whenever we feel frustrated, which means what we think it means, it also means energetic frustration. So in other words, when you just feel like your energy is flowing like sludge, like you're just like, "Eh." yeah, it's it's not working, whatever it is, then get back in alignment. Mm -hmm. So for both MGs and generators, it means let go of stuff. So find out what are the no's? Is it the job that you go to every day? Is it the clutter that's piling up in your bedroom? Like there are so many different places where we can clear out the no's. So start out there, follow what lights you up. And if you're an MG, play. All right. Yeah, we forget to do that, don't we? I mean, Mm -hmm. everybody does, but it sounds like MGs need to pay attention to that more. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then for a projector, it's bitterness. So it's when you feel bitter, like if somebody didn't take your advice and you feel bitter, that's your reminder that you're out of alignment. How do you get in alignment? You create invitations. Right. Yeah. I have, I know somebody who's a projector and that's exactly, she's, she's familiar with human design. So she knows you know, that aspect of it, like she needs to um, be invited and, Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's really interesting. And then, yeah, that really uh, lights her up when that happens. I can, you know, I've experienced that with her before. (laughs) And then manifestors get angry. And when a manifestor is angry, that's their red flag that they're out of alignment. Interesting. And what does that mean for them? It means they're playing small or they feel like they're trapped. Oh, right. Just Did, need to own their power. They feel trapped often. And like it, mm-hmm. that kind of goes with the anger you're saying in a way. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. the feeling of being trapped is what's going to make them feel angry. Oh, I see. That's kind of the trigger. Yeah. 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 They feel okay. trapped and they might not know that until you ask them. 
or you right. tell them that like, oh, you, you guys tend to feel angry when you feel trapped. And then they're like, oh, that's exactly what it is. They also get angry when they're like, they essentially get trapped in other people's opinions and, and asking permission because that's totally out of alignment for them. You're just supposed to do it. Yeah. You're not supposed to ask, right? Yeah. Okay. No, Interesting. Wow. Which leads to the other thing about manifestors. Sometimes manifestors just walk away. They just do their own thing. And manifesting generators do this too. I have recently learned, my husband and I are both manifesting generators, but I recently found that I'm, it's helpful if I tell him when I'm going to brush my teeth at night, <laughs> like I'm done, I'm going to bed and I'm going to brush my teeth. Otherwise he's like, where'd you go? And this is classic manifester. Your manifester friend is the one that you're constantly like, where'd you go? What happened? <laughs> yeah, just to- right uh manifester doing their thing so That's manifestors and Supposed manifesting generators need to remember tell people where you're going gotcha otherwise people get upset with you yourself. yeah <laughs> or they're just like what? that person is so aloof <laughs> right. we're not we just honestly don't think of it yeah yeah it doesn't occur interesting oh my gosh okay um yeah and i'm i'm i, I just can't wait to look some people up that i know now in my family <laughs> after this. Um, it's so gosh. helpful to know everybody around you's human design because yeah. then you can, it just makes so much sense. Even, even the people who trigger you. Oh, all right. Yeah. Maybe they're like an unaligned projector or, or maybe they're actually like in total alignment and you just need to know, learn to love and celebrate that. Yeah. Yeah. You just, there's just a lack of understanding there where everybody's coming from. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. So, uh, so we've kind of established what all the different human designs are. The types are the five energy types, you know, how they can clean up their auras, what to look for when they're out of alignment and, and how to correct that. Um, how can we use human design in our uh, and integrate it into our everyday lives, like romantic relationships, collaborations with others, friendships, stuff like that? It's so helpful to know other people's designs. Right. It's like I was talking about with the gift of knowing how to say things. Yes. So right. one of the ways that shows up for any entrepreneurs listening. I have this tendency, like when I read a sales page, that's how I describe the project. And then, okay, I'm going to write an email about it. Oh, God, okay. How do I say this? Other than just copying and pasting the sales page into the email. Yeah. Because I don't have that gift, but the people who have that gift are like, oh, I have a million ways to say it. And right. so we lean on people that have those gifts. And another, like, it's also understanding the differences. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that you have gate 46, probably. I have gate 46. <laughs> it's the love of the physical body. We tend yeah, to be I the athletes, the yeah. people who are very passionate about health. We, we treat our bodies as temples. We are very aware. And we also, it's like we signed up for PE class when we came into earth school. We learn a lot <laughs> through our bodies. Oh yeah, that's me. Totally. Yeah. Like all the pain, all the injuries, all the, everything, it comes in, all the wisdom is in our bodies and it shows itself to us through pain and dysfunction and invites us to come back into alignment. Yeah. It's, I think I've learned my greatest, uh, lessons and, and, and my injuries have been my greatest gifts along the way to help me help other people. Yeah. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So being able to interact with other humans, I have this dream that we all wear our charts, like, like we have like lanyards around our neck or something. And so the first time you meet somebody, you just see their chart. All oh, right. And so you're like, oh, you've got this gift of knowing the recipe for things. There's this one gift where someone you, you say, I want to do this. And they're like, oh, okay. So we need to do A, B, C, D. And <laughs> I don't have that. My assistant has that. When I say <laughs> I want to like create a program or something, she's like, yeah. okay, this, so this is what we need to do with emails and da, 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 da. Like, and I'm just sitting there with my mouth open, like what? <laughs> okay. 
Just tell me what to do. None of this makes any sense to me. Right. <laughs> so we got it. It like it helps us to be in awe of other people. Like That's to see true. them owning yeah. these gifts. Yeah. Whoever said that we had to know everything, right? And do everything. Isn't that so silly? I think about that. I'm like, I don't I whoever said that, you know, <laughs> like I don't yeah. Did anyone yeah. ever say that? Or is that some garbage that we picked up? along the way. And yeah. we all feel like we're supposed to be good at everything, but really none of, we would all love to break out of that prison. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. And just own the gifts that we do have. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Because it's just such a relief to know, okay, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And then you don't beat yourself up for not doing it the way someone else did it, or, you know, not meeting your expectations or someone else's because it wasn't, you know, a certain way we have, yeah, we all have our unique way of, of being in the world and there's no wrong. It's, it's just that I, I believe that many people, um, you know, the role models and the examples that we have are, you know, sometimes many of the same things and, and, and there's not as much of that uniqueness that's um, that we're that we're seeing, you know, that, that like different ways of doing it. But if you, but, but they they are out there. If you, if you get curious and you, you know, um, you know, with something like this, especially, you can kind of start to see it that way. But um, I think in, if we don't get curious about ourselves, then we will never really know that there are different ways of people doing it. And that's where that's where all the creativity comes from. Like people who are doing it differently in a way that pe people are like, wow, I never even thought that that was possible, but someone did it because they, they just, uh, you know, open themselves up to other possibilities. And uh, aside from the way people are already doing things. Yeah. Realizing that, maybe that, yeah. You know, that reminds me of one of the first prisons I broke out of when I learned about human design was the prison of specificity and strategery. <laughs> so I was like, right before I learned about human design, I was working with a business coach who kept telling me, Kelsey, you just have to be more specific. Like you have to uh -huh. drill down, get super specific about who your ideal client is, like know what they're having for breakfast. And oh, you know, I really don't like that myself. <laughs> then you're probably not built for specificity either. So I kept, I was like, you know, temper tantrum, like, no. And then finally I'm like, fine, like, fine. I'll try it. Right. I tried it. And my flow like came to a screeching halt. It was like, nothing is working anymore. Now I, I like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I am. What the heck is going on? And then it was like two weeks later that I learned about this little piece in the human design chart that shows us if we're here to be specific or non-specific, oh. strategic or not strategic. And I'm not here to be specific. That makes and I was like, sense. ha, ha Yeah, see? I bet I'm not either. I bet I'm not either. Because <laughs> that really res resonates. I'm like, yeah, that's why some of the marketing strategies really turned me off. I was like, I guess I'm not going to market. I'm not, I guess I'm not going to be a marketer because this sucks. I don't really like any of it. And it didn't resonate with me because I feel like I'm the type of person that, like you said earlier, like wants to show from example and inspire people that way. And I don't really want to try to figure people out or try to, you know, tell you what you are, what you aren't, or, or try to find that target market like that. It, I don't know why, but for something about that really turns me off, you know, and that might be why. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why. And yeah. we are the ones that get the we get to be creative about yeah. how we do things because there is no ABC step for us when it comes to marketing. We get to, for instance, like for me, I'm like, I love talking about human design. Like I said, I want everyone, you know, someday to wear their chart on their, on their sleeve or around their neck or wherever. I don't care where you wear it. I want to see everyone's chart when I encounter another human. So I want to spread the word about human design. I didn't say, I want to be an enter it yourself podcast. Like I didn't come up with this specific list because I'm not here to be specific. I'm like, I want to spread the word. Show me, yeah. show me how I'm supposed to do that. That's exactly. Yeah. I love that. Oh, that just feels so good for me too. Yeah. It, and it's, it, it because it, it opens up, I feel like more possibility, you know, and, and instead of trying to make it seem like it's going to only happen like this, you know, it just feels like tight, you know? Yeah. So. No, well, the universe knows way better than we do. Yeah. Yeah. So, totally. um, I actually have another example of how I 
used my lack of strategery. And uh, I don't know if that's a word, but I like it. <laughs> um, it's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> so last year, I, I've been making meditations for a long time. And at the start of COVID, I was getting a lot of requests for meditations. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I really want these to be available to everybody. Free. None of this, like, it's an online business. You got to at least get somebody's email address. Oh, Right. Like, you know, get something for yourself as you do it. None of this, like a dollar to download or anything like that. I was like, I want these to be absolutely positively free. And so I shared them on my website and I said, these are totally free. If you are inspired to express your gratitude with a donation, you can do so here. And just right. like shared my PayPal link. And then I went on with my life. A couple months later, I get a PayPal notification that I just received $50. This is a thank you for the meditation. Wow. And it's the universe being like, see, you follow your heart. We bring you abundance because you know, let's look at this strategy that I could have used a dollar per download or 50 people downloading meditations. I don't think so. Right. Uh, getting people on my email list who eventually might become clients. Yeah. That might take a while. Mm -hmm. Like this was the universe being like, we got you. Yeah. Yeah. And then people are, might be like, oh, what is this human design thing? I might, I'm going to have to try that. Like they may happen, that might happen faster than what yeah. you thought, you know, the, the other ways of doing it. Yeah. And, and that is the thing. I, I know I've learned that this year too, is, is that um, it really is kind of whatever is inspiring or calling you just to try. It may not seem, you know, like it really makes sense at first, but it does later, right? Most, most of the time, as long as you're like, it's like your soul is calling you to do it or you're passionate about it. You're like, I just want to try this, you know? It doesn't make sense. I don't know why, but, you know, it, it might make sense later. And that's how I've been doing things this past year. So um, I truly believe that's that's the way to go. And it actually, it's more fun that way too. Isn't it? I yeah, can't imagine like, trying to know the ending for everything. Oh, I know. Oh, like if you're watching a movie and you know the ending before you start, like how boring I'll is that? Oh, just walk away if that's yeah. the case. Seriously. In fact, as an athlete, I worked with a sports psychologist years ago and she had me write out my race plan in a way where I like actually told the specifics of the story. And yeah. I did this before world championships and the race was, except for a Mexican athlete who very successfully blocked me on the run. Like I couldn't get around him. Everything was like exactly as I'd written it. And wow. people were like, wow, that's so cool. I was like, it was so boring. <laughs> I don't do it that way anymore. I'll get yeah. like, I'll get into the feelings that I want, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. nothing specific because when I cross yeah. the finish line, like I, I, I want to lead with curiosity. Yeah. Not with, I know what's going to happen. Ugh. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I, I like the curiosity aspect. I think that's a way better way to go about it. And um, yeah, it's, I think you learn more from that. I, I know I go into sessions with my clients, not always, I used to try to plan it more years ago and it never worked out. And because, you know, you, you don't know what kind of energy someone's coming in with. So it's like, I have to adapt and <clears throat> uh, use the tools I have to help that person wherever they're at at that moment in time. And so I trust that I have everything I need when I go into that session and I can help them that way. <clears throat> I don't necessarily have to be prepared in the traditional sense of like having all this, this planned out and writing programs for people um, in that re regard, you know, uh, the programs I write for people are more fun. It's not, it's so boring. It's some of the stuff in fit in the fitness industry. Um, and, but yeah, I, I try to make it fun. Like, you know, Hey, let's do, you know, in my program, let's do some vocal toning to, you know, get you into your parasympathetic nervous system. <laughs> it's more fun, you know? So, I learned that lesson early on in my fitness career. I think the second class I taught, the first class was a surprise. Um, so the second, like, in other words, I found out five minutes before I was teaching that I was teaching. And then the next class, I was like, oh, okay, I made a, a plan. Oh my God, that plan lasted like 10 minutes. And then I was like, this is not flowing. Ditched it. 
And then a few years later, when I was teaching a core class once, I had a college student come up to me and say, I'm going back to school for a couple of months, but I'll be back like for Thanksgiving break. Do you have like a syllabus or something that I could follow along with? So I stay in shape and I'd no, no, I have no idea. It's amazing to me that you've been taking this class for like eight months and you didn't know that I'm making it up as I go along, <laughs> but I am, and I have no idea what we're going to do over the next few months. <laughs> but it, I bet it worked out really well, didn't it? It did. It yeah. always works out really well. And yeah. if people can't handle that, then they don't come to my class. Yeah. You got to work on the fly. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's more inspiring in some way. And plus, like, I, I like to read the room, you know, I like to feel the energy and that's what really, that's the information I get. So, um, and yeah, it just, it's just after you've been doing it for a certain amount of time, it, it, that skill develops, you know, and it's really more intuitive than anything else. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, but aside from that, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, if you come into a room and people are just like beat up from their week, maybe you'll feel the energy is like, oh, they just need to shake it off. But maybe what they need is like to just be in a safe place and just Absolutely. Like well, soothe yeah. themselves. Yeah. And I, I, I like to uplift, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, uplift it, uh, the energy to bring them up to that certain level of that, you know, um, of where they probably want to be anyway, you know, but it's, it's, that's, that's the energy I bring to the table. And it's because it's more enjoyable for me. And I feel like I can serve pet people better that way, you know, and instead of coming down to where no, we're at, no, that's not really helpful. Because yeah. you're here to be sparkly and it's your sparkle that's going to elevate the world. <laughs> right. So that is how you serve them with your sparkle. Yeah. Yes. I not love by that. sacrificing yourself. Yeah. That's not fun either. Yeah. That's, that's just a terrible way to live. I think in my, in, the, in for me anyway, you know, mm -hmm. so I've learned the lesson there with that one. Um, well, that's cool. I feel like we have so much in common. I want to definitely stay in touch and get more into, you know, um, maybe just talk again at another time or, you know, I don't know how, I mean, maybe, yeah. we, you know, yes. we can connect again soon is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Kelsey, do you have anything to leave with my audience? Like how do they get in touch with you? How do they work with you? And, uh, you know, see your, you have some, I think you have some courses too, right. That you offer. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I do. I forget about them. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's start with, you can just come over to KelseyAbbott.com. Okay. You can get your free chart there. You can sign up for a human design reading, a one-on-one -on -one reading, or bring your partner. Partner can be your romantic partner, your sibling, your kid, your business partner, your best friend, someone you just met off the street. If you want to know how your energies <laughs> fit together, and those are so fun. Um, yeah. And I've got some courses. I've got Sparking Joy, which is like an advent calendar that's really accessible. If your joy is deflated in this global pandemic, come treat yourself to Sparking Joy. I've also got Unstuck Yourself if you're super stuck and really down in the dumps and feel like you're like in the mud with like a snorkel sticking out. Mm. Unstuck Yourself is for you. I like the name of that. <laughs> what else do I have? Oh, we can transform your inner critic transform your inner critic, which is something we all have. That is super accessible. That's $11 and 11 cents because oh, I want yeah. everybody to have access to that. That's amazing. So come yeah. over to my website, uh, listen to the find your awesome podcast. And I have a brand new YouTube channel and you can get to that through my website. Oh, cool. Well, thank you, Kelsey. This has been an honor and a pleasure talking with you today. And uh, I wish you well. And again, let's let's stay connected, okay? Yeah, I've loved hanging yeah. out with you, Allison. Yeah, Thank you me so too. much. It was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs>